I hope everyone is doing really great and today I'm going to be talking about something called the Cliff Bar Diet. Now it's not officially a diet per se, it's something that I actually attempted to do many years ago but recently I googled Cliff Bar Diet and a lot of people out there are asking is there a diet solely based around Cliff Bars? So far the answer is no, so here is my response to those people asking about is this a diet and this is my experience while attempting the Cliff Bar diet. So since the Cliff Bar diet is not actually a thing, I was able to write the rules for it myself and the rules I came up with were I allowed myself two Cliff Bars twice a day. So that's four Cliff Bars total. The diet itself, I lasted about three weeks before giving up and realizing this was stupid. So four Cliff Bars averages out to just over a thousand calories, not even 1100 calories. It was, I would say average, it would be 1050 calories a day, which is obviously not nearly enough for an adult woman who is active. So what were the side effects that I experienced? I was very hungry, I had very little energy, and I became extra depressed. This diet came into mind when I discovered that Cliff Bars are in fact vegan and also the fact that I had never actually tried a Cliff Bar before. So I tried one and of course, as someone who came from a very restrictive anorexic background, eating something that sweet was, it was like crack. My brain just went crazy for it and all I wanted to do was eat Cliff Bars. So in my mind, it made sense to just make a diet based around the thing that I just wanted to eat day in and day out. However, also coming from a very restrictive background, I couldn't allow myself to indulge or overindulge in Cliff Bars. I still had to limit myself and that's why the four Cliff Bars a day rule came into play. I, I attempted this diet when I... Basically, I had convinced myself that I was recovering from my eating disorder, that because I was in recovery, I couldn't... For some reason, it made sense in my brain that I could still go on crazy diets and still recover from an eating disorder. It was as if I convinced myself that the eating disorder only looked a certain way and it couldn't possibly look another way. So when I started basically repeating my bad habits, just doing them in a different way, I convinced myself that that wasn't the eating disorder, it's just a new way of eating, it's a new way of thinking, it's not an eating disorder because I'm recovering. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's kind of, it's, it's very hard to explain the thinking behind it, but when you're so used to an eating disorder manifesting itself in a certain way, when it manifests itself in another way, you don't recognize it, so you don't recognize it as an eating disorder or a symptom of an eating disorder. Even though I was convinced that I was recovering or even that I was recovered, which I wasn't even close to being in recovery at this point, but I was convinced that I was. So why would I possibly, why would I fathom that this was a good idea at the time? Number one, I wasn't well. I was not recovered. I hadn't even chosen to recover, like consciously chosen to recover at this point, even though I was certain that I was. But I never actually made that commitment. I still couldn't let go of my eating disorder, and this was my way, one of my many ways, that I could still have an eating disorder but convince myself that I didn't have an eating disorder. I was holding on to old habits, really bad old habits, and it's really hard to shake habits that you are just so accustomed to and you have lived with for so long, and not just habits, but a way of thinking, and it's very hard to get rid of, 
it's hard enough trying to get rid of a habit, but to get rid of a way of thinking and a mentality that you have basically encircled your whole life around, it's very hard to get rid of those bad thoughts and those bad habits. And lastly, at this point, I was not ready to recover. My brain thought I was, but I just wasn't. Despite all the awful side effects that I experienced, being incredibly depressed, wanting to be alone all the time, not wanting to eat in front of people, just, you know, having low energy, just wanting to sleep all day, not wanting to get up, not wanting to do anything. I had lost my motivation to actually be active, even though that was a big part of my life. And just being hungry all the time, despite all that, those weren't actually the reasons I stopped doing this after three weeks. Three reasons why I stopped this fake diet. The first one being when I was with my friends and we would eat together, I could just, it was basically peer pressure to eat normal food again or to have a desire to eat normal food again. My fr I could see my friends eating normal food and they're looking at me like, you are insane and that's all you're eating. I could tell they're like, I'm not going to say anything to her, but I want to because that's just ridiculous that all she's eating is clip Bars. And I could feel this coming from my friends. And honestly, in this sense, peer pressure was a good thing. They didn't pressure me to eat normal food. They never said anything to make me eat normal food. But I could just feel a vibe from them that made me feel not normal because this wasn't normal. And it made me want to be normal. So the second reason why I quit the Cliff Bar diet is I suddenly, out of nowhere, had this very strong desire to eat normal, real food again. And this is probably my body's way of telling me it was lacking nutrients and proper nutrition and all of that good stuff. My body just wanted something fresh. I mean, a Cliff Bar is very heavily processed. There's a lot of sweetness in it. It's very dense with like the oaty, grainy um, ingredients. So it was just a lot of dense, not very nutritionally balanced stuff, basically. And my body just wanted something fresh. It wanted something real. And it's really important for us to really learn to listen to our bodies because when you have that craving for something wholesome and real when it comes to food, that means that you are missing something from your current diet. And in this case, I was missing everything because all I was eating was processed bars of sweetness, basically. And the final reason why I quit and probably the most important reason why I quit and probably one of the reasons why I feel actual guilt towards doing this diet in the first place is one of my friends had an eating disorder and I could feel every time she saw me eating this little, I could feel what she, her desire to be like me. And I, she had said on so many occasions that she wished she could eat as little as me and be as tiny as me and all these things. And it was when I realized that she was serious and she, I noticed her eating less when I would eat less and I couldn't be that negative influence. It was very important for me. Despite not ready to recover, I wanted to be a good influence on other girls who had eating disorders. I wanted to help them and I wanted to encourage them to live happy, healthy lives and being able to have a good relationship with eating and have a good relationship with food. So as soon as I, as soon as it clicked in my mind that my bad habits are still present and my eating disorder is still present within my own crazy experimental diet phase or whatever you want to call it, as soon as I realized that I was projecting these bad eating habits and projecting an eating disorder on a very naive and vulnerable girl, I had to stop. My brain is always set on helping other people and caring for other people. So as soon as I saw that what I was doing was affecting her, I had to stop it. I had to change my habits so she could see 
positive influence, positive eating habits, positive relationship with food. So I immediately dropped it, started bringing real food again to school so she could see that I still ate like a normal person and I still, I, that I could get rid of an eating disorder, that I, I wanted her to know I didn't have an eating disorder to be a positive influence. Her, that friend, was the real reason, the main reason why I quit the Cliff Bar diet and that she's also the reason and girls like her are the reason why I pray to God that when I googled Cliff Bar diet and all these people are asking is there a diet based around Cliff Bar about around cliff bars, I pray to God that no one tries to invent a cliff bar diet that restricts to that extreme. That's just another one of the crazy stupid diets that I attempted to try out and I experimented on myself. In previous videos I've talked about it, I would invent diets all the time. Diets that would only allow one specific food and then I would just see what the side effects were and I would see what happened to me. I don't know why I have this weird innate desire to test things out and see what the results are even when I am the test subject and I already know that it's not going to end well but I had to live through it to, I had to experience it to grow from it. So this was just another one of my made up diets that I tried out. So that's the Cliff Bar diet. I would recommend not attempting it. Do not try it. Don't even, I don't even think Cliff Bars are the healthiest option when it comes to, I don't even know what a Cliff Bar is. Honestly, it's a, it's a candy bar. In my opinion, I think it's a candy bar that is masquerading as a health food, but it's not really. They're delicious, so every once in a while, of course, indulge. They're better than a candy bar if that they're probably about the same nutritional value but they are good but you shouldn't eat them 24 7 and only that so thank you so much for clicking on the video thank you for watching all the way through i really appreciate it if you learned something if you liked something please hit the like button and for more videos about diets and eating disorders and all that good stuff please subscribe and i will see you next time bye